Hi everyone, uh, now I'm actually tying some, I'm tying weights and I'm tying some emergers at the moment. Uh, this one here, just a very basic emerger pattern. Now, over the, the year I've been using quite a lot of materials, uh, especially from Full Mill, uh, especially new materials from Full Mill anyway, and i uh, had some really good success in some of the flies I tied. Uh, it's mainly, well, as you probably, if you've watched any of my videos, uh, I did fish and tie a few dynamite harry patterns. Uh, I used lots of different fibre for the wing, uh, and I have done in the last few years, I, I tying the fly. Uh, and Full of Milk came out with this this year, that's called Ultra Dry Yarn, so I decided obviously to tie a few up, see how it went. And, uh, how can I say... Yeah, I've tied, I don't want to name the other companies or what other fibre I use, but this really fished extremely well. Uh, I wouldn't say it otherwise, not, um, I know you you know that I do use a bit of full and mill fibre and materials and hooks and stuff. I mean, I use other companies as well, but when you've got a good fibre or something that's working extremely well, then you've got to mention it. It's as simple as that. Now, one that I did use a lot was the... The ultra dry yarn, as I say, and their dubbins, uh, quite a few of their dubbins, and uh, the dry, the dry fly version, or uh, they call it very sim. It's very similar name to the the actual this here as well. This is the ultra dry yarn, and this is the ultra dry dub. So they go together, uh, and I mean I've tied, as I say, a few but different patterns, uh, patterns I've tied for many years, just using this instead, uh, using, as I say, another fibre. And the synthetic fibre as well as natural. And you can, if you haven't got this, and I know obviously it's new to the market, it's starting to come out now. Uh, in the UK and, and Europe, I think you can get it easily. Uh, you can get it quite quick. Um, in America, I think it's just starting to come on the market over there. So you can give it a go. Now, what's different about it? Um, well, it's very light. It's very kind of, it's got. Not as straight as a lot of the fibre, it's kind of close to uh, the polypro as they used to call it, uh, polypropylene, uh, but it's far lighter and uh, it, it's, it opens out really well and it keeps it keeps dry, I mean it's, <laughs> it really does work. Now there's three lengths in there, when you have the hank, uh, a single length is about that like this, uh, this one here. I've obviously, for the size of fly, I'm tying, I've put three, three, three together. I've also used it as the shock, so I've got a small piece using I'm going to be tying as the shock. As I say, I'm obviously going to use the dry fly dubbing too, and two of the first colours I actually went into the dry dub was just the kind of natural light colours. Uh, the hairs, here's the air for the thorax, excuse me, and uh, this is a grey. Now, Again, what is different about this and uh, many of the dry fly dubbins on the market? Well, I have a few of them as well. <laughs> I've got plenty of dubbins. Uh, this is just a wee bit coarse. It's a bit coarser. Uh, I mean, meaning that it's, it's springy. It's got a much... The fibre is a wee bit more, you can see, leggy-like, uh, which I liked. And it was different from the rest of the fibres that I actually had. So that's, that's what made it good as well. And it does float extremely well. So we're going to sort of basically put a pattern together. As I say, I've been tying some weights. Um, this this one wet here I'm tying. This is a great pattern. It's a hair's ear and golden plover. Uh, it's, a, it's an old pattern. As well as I've been tying snipe and purples. Um, water hen blower. Great colours. Great colour combinations that you can add to these modern style flies. And if you do that, you'll not go wrong. I mean, if you float a water hen blower, make it float by putting a wing on it, you can't go far wrong. It will work. So, anyway, I'll zoom in a wee bit closer so you can see. That should do it. That's fine. Maybe a wee bit too close. I'll just come out a wee bit. That's better. Now, who I'm using? This is a, a favourite of mine for emergers, especially. You could use a straight hook as well, but it would still work with this fly. This is a check nymph, believe it or not, as you can see, uh, the size 16. Uh, it's a nice curved hook, it's a barbless hook. Uh, you can get it in this bronze, you can get it in black nickel. 
and I have used it in a few dries and a few mergers uh, and I've been, once you get a hook you like it's quite hard to, to change uh, so but not change but it just you keep using it put it that way uh, thread I'm going to be using is a uni thread in 8 and yellow I'm just going to run my wax through it so start of the eye I'm just going to come down to in line with it's basically the point of the hook that space that's where you would normally have your, your thorax type area now, as I say I've got a few these are not many fibers but it's the same the ultra dry yarn uh, I'm just going to pull this one off and we tie this on the way down just to give the impression of the shop and it could be a wee tail as well that's why it's such a good style of fly this and I'm going to wind it around, now you can stop short, you can go a wee bit further if you want a wee bit body to sit further in the water you can come down a wee bit, I'll, I'll, look, I'll come round a wee bit further here now you're looking for a, at least a short length around about the body or even the hook length, it's up to yourself so I would say around about there is fine Just roll it together, now I'm taking a wee turn underneath here just to help keep the fibres together it's fine you don't need it, you can put more on, you can make it less, it's up to yourself. Now I'm actually going to rub this fly, I'm, I'm going to basically, you can rub it with a thread, which I've done, or you can rub it with a, a fine, sort of letter, a fine tinsel, this is just a fine tinsel, in gold, which is basically, nature is yellow. So I'm going to be using the, this is a, it's an unusual name for a pepper box, where it's just a nice grey colour. Uh, in the ultra dry dub, so I've got some on my desk. Now, if you're into Cadis, um, or sorry, representing Cadis, you'd make it the body a wee touch heavier. If it's done or so, or sometimes you want it a wee bit finer. If you want the body, especially the yellow, to show through, you can even make it sort of a wee bit less. But some sort of taper anyway, some sort of shape. You can see I'm tying the, the tinsel in at the same time all the way up. Now I did catch on this when the granum was coming off this pattern so it was uh, very good. So then bring my rib up through. I see you don't need to do this, I mean, just a normal dub body. What I'm doing here is I'm just drawing this back. Any fibres going forward just draw them back. Catch my tinsel on. I've got three or four turns to make sure it's not there. Basically pull out a wee bit more wax and tidy the area. Uh, it's fine. I'm going to put the wing on. I see I'm going to use three lengths. I would probably the, the sort of sensible thing to do is to when you're tying these type of merger flies is to unless you've got a set pattern you want to follow and exactly on a dressing that you've done extremely well. Um, just stick to that but or if you want to like something that like I do quite a lot it just depends on the water I'm fishing you can get away with a heavier dress fly in a rougher water now if you make all your flies very light dressed um, and you can't see them they're stuck with that but if you're using a fly and you can slightly overdress it and get away with that in rough water or, or even areas where you can't see the fly you need a wee bit more to see the fly, uh, you can add a wee bit more, but you can always take it off, you can't add it on, so slightly overdress it, just slightly. I'm going to catch this on, wax my thread, whoops, make sure that's not going to move, and then uh, make sure it's nice and tight. That's fine. Now, to keep it in the merger sort of length, again, if you really want to, you could cut it as far back as you like, and then on the water you could always trim it back with your tweezers or sort of your snips. Or if you're going to be on the right size and keep it separate from the, say the shock, you want to cut it in the line with the back of the hook. And usually a good a straight cut straight up from the back. And that'll give you your wing. That looks fine. Now you can put a hackle on, now you have got, you can use, I've actually got some CDC feathers, fibres, uh, I'm more likely to put a grey on this, so this is a cinnamon and a, a sort of 
natural or a grey. Use natural grey. I think I'll just use this wee one here. This will give me a nice contrast in the colour. There's a, the the wing colour of this, I hope I said it, but it's actually tan. No, you wouldn't look at it, you would think it was more grey like, but it's a great colour. I, I really like the colour. So if you're buying tan, you'll get a colour like this. So what I've got is a wee series he hackle here, I'm going to wind it on. Now, I dyed this myself, this was dyed light cinnamon. Uh, it was a domestic duck, which was white, CDC. Uh, if you haven't got it, just use a hackle, just use even a cock hackle, hen hackle. You can use whatever you like. So I'm just going to come round, you're only going to get a couple of turns or so. And don't be shy with the length. Don't worry about it. It's in the merger fly, it's, it's basically... It's opening out, so there's a lot of... It's a, you've got the shock. You've got the fly's legs, you've got the wing up, uh, so, uh, starting to burst open. And especially for caddis that works. Now for the thorax area, I'm going to use the hairs, the hairs ear version, this one. And again, I've got some on my desk here, so... See, so it's quite a springy-like fibre as well as, the same as the, the winging material. Now you can put this on as tight as you like, or as loose as you like. I've done it both ways. And when you're on the water again, you can always. I just use the the velcro on my my jacket just to rough it out. So we're ready to tease out the fiber. As you can see, I'm actually working from the eye up, tightening the dubbing as I go, getting that nice shape. You have a tapered shape there anyway. Just make sure you've got that. That's fine. So basically happy. Then you just work your way through. It's fine, take away the excess dubbing. Set it on your desk. Now I'm going to quick finish. Just make, there's an odd fibre here, I'm just going to take out the road. Uh, before I do that, I'm actually going to put some varnish on my, my thread. Just basically wipe it, just like I'm using obviously a brush. From the eye down, maybe a good centimetre. And then hold the dubbing back, just what finish. You'll always catch the odd fiber, I do it as well, so trim that away. So there we are, that's it. Great fly, get part, ideal for uh, the many emerging type duns that's coming off. Even caddis, it's a good caddis pattern, a good merger for caddis. So you got a nice shape, nice profile. If the very soft hackle of the CDC, I know it looks, there's, as a wee bit of colour, but that tiny bit, bit of movement, you'd be amazed how much that makes sometimes a difference. Uh, that will move in the water. So there we are. I hope you enjoyed that. And again, thanks for watching. <laughs>